Hey everybody, Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. Uh, it's been a few days. I actually planned on doing this particular video while I was in the office today, but it was extremely busy, had a lot going on, uh, and I wasn't able to get it done. And so I'm gonna have to do it on the way home because I don't wanna wait another day. And I know when I get home, uh, everybody's gonna be pulling at me and it's not gonna really be a time or space to really get, get away and do it. Uh, as you know, we've been doing the Measure of a Man series. So far we've done uh, four parts of the Measure of the Man. This is gonna be part five. Uh, the goal is to define black manhood and to lay out key elements, principles, components, and characteristics of manhood that has to be socialized uh, into young black males uh, so that we are building strong black men who can function and operate within their roles within the community. So we know what to expect. So there's not so much ambiguity um, and uh, nebulosity, so to speak, of what a man is. And so we set out to do that. Uh, I want to remind you that all of this is about building stronger black men. It's about creating a safer community. It's about uh, creating more productive young black males. It's about filling in the gaps and restoring the home. It's about so many different things that are so uh, important uh, to this quest we say we have of empowering the black community, of liberating the black community. That there has to be measurable, actionable steps uh, for this to take place. It's, it can't be just simply a wish, an idea. It has to be something you can look at that's measurable, something you can look at and say, okay, this is where we're at, this is where we're going, this is how we're gonna get there. And a part of this is truly creating a space for young black men. And with that in mind, we're talking about Black Men Lead, the rite of passage uh, program, and the wraparound services for young black males up to the age of 30. Uh, we are in a midst of a fundraiser. We need you to go to the description box as we talk about this and click the link and show some support for what we're doing in the black community as far as this thing. We do a lot of work, not just in this area, but this is so key to what we're doing. And if you pay attention to the Measure of a Man series, you're gonna see just how important uh, the role of black men uh, the role black men play in the community or are supposed to play in the community is. And then when we minimize it, when we marginalize it, when we reduce it to a paycheck or a bank account, uh, we really truly miss the force and the impact of the black man. And it makes it dip more, even more difficult to understand exactly why we're where we're at. So uh, when I started this series out, I started the series out talking about the five P's of black manhood uh, as I gained it, learned it, studied it, anatomized it, and broke it down and evolved it initially from uh, the late, great Dr. Miles Monroe. Now, while some of the principles will come off as highly religious, I have removed the religious components. I'm simply talking about functionality here. I'm not telling you what you need to be. I'm not telling you what faith to practice. I'm talking about connectivity to God and a divine presence of oneself. And you have to understand that if you're ever going to truly operate in your true, uh, your true nature. And, and so, uh, the references are simply references because the most most black people will understand them. Uh, but I'm going to do the best I can to bridge for anybody who may not be connected to or familiar with any of the Abrahamic religions or any of the other uh, religions or even Islam and so forth. So, but, but, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to be very, very um, to the point as far as I can with this because I'm going to have it done before I get home. Okay, here we go. The first, the first uh, part of this series was simply the introduction of the uh, five P's. First, provider. Second, I mean, first, protector. Second, provider. Third, promoter. Fourth, priest. And fifth, prophet. Uh, 
you want to see a more detailed introduction, you can go to part one. And then I've, I've gone through and I've broken each one down in their own individual segment so you can see what they mean. Uh, right now we are at number four, a priest. And again, I want to remove the religiosity from this, but I want to talk about it from a sense of divine nature and a sense of design, di divine purpose and a role of, uh, of uh, divine nature. And so here we go. When you look and you study priesthood, no matter what you're talking about, you're talking about uh, priesthood, uh, when you're talking about the tribe of Levi, the Levites, or you're talking about priesthood in the sense of uh, the Catholic Church, or you're talking about priesthood, whatever you're talking about, there are a couple of characteristics that represent what priesthood, it, what the priesthood is. And those are the things I want to focus on. I want to focus on religiosity and all that I want to focus on three things the first thing that a priest is when you study uh, biblical priesthood when you study Abrahamic priesthood when you study anything you, you've come to find out uh, that there are three primary components. the first component is that of a mediator that of a mediator the mediator is someone who comes in and bridges a gap when there's a separation the mediator is the one who comes in and establishes or works to us reestablish or connect uh, two different entities. In this sense, we're talking about uh, the divine nature of God, the creator or the almighty or the most high and the divine nature of those created by God that function as representations or extensions or expressions of God. And so we're talking about uh, in a home, a man is the priest and the mediator of his wife and his children and his grandchildren if they happen to be in the home. Now, what does that mean? That means any different, any deviation from divine nature, any deviation from anything that reduces your ability to function in your divine nature. In other words, uh, mitigates your power, mitigates your force, reduces you to something less because you're not operating in the fullness of who you are. There is a separation. The more you get away from your divine nature, the more you move away from the most high. As a mitigator, I mean, as a mediator, the priest in the family, the man in the home comes in and he works with both God and son, God and daughter, God and wife, God and grandchildren to bring the one who has moved away from their divine positioning back into place and to, and to reconnect that connectivity and that happens in a bunch of different ways. Okay, so it's in teaching, it's in discipline, it's in uh, modeling, it's in casual conversation, and it is in consistent movement. So there's this mediation that takes place. You gotta know, okay, you're, son, I know you, you're trying to do X, Y, Z, but let me tell you something where you this is what you need to do because this is what's expected of you you know who you are and you know what's coming you know what's going to be expected to you expected of you as a man you cannot compromise that by doing this and then you bring them back before god not in a sense again of this religiosity and all of this but in a sense of understanding your divine identity and then in doing so, you connect them to the divine source. So you are a secondary source to the primary source, but you are still a source. So what happens is the secondary source reconnects what has been released from the source. So God released it first, but the father released it second. The father is the secondary source and the most connected source, but he brings back all that belongs to the most high. That's the mediator. That is the one who provides resolution in the time of conflict or in the time of distance. Okay, second is the interceder. The interceder is the one that speaks on behalf of, that petitions on the behalf of. And on as an interceder, as an interceder, you are literally going before God and speaking on behalf of while you're mediating, you can still be interceding. But interceding is literally an extension of this, the, 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 the first P. The first P is protector. Intercession is a form of protection. 
Intercession is where you speak a divine and spiritual covering. Intercession is where you sit up and you see your child going through something or your wife going through something and you start to speak with divine power and in direct correspondence to that will of the almighty or the most high. That That is interceding. In other words, you are acting on behalf of, you are functioning as an advocate, but you are functioning as an advocate with the most high on behalf of. <clears throat> That's powerful. The final the final uh, function of the priest is to elevate. The final function of the priest is to elevate. In other words, to, to lift, to edify, to function as the one who brings a person up to their highest state. And that's done through engagement, that's done through speech, that's done through uh, the presentation and representation of identity. Uh, it's its so important. One of the things, I just think about something, one of the things that I've shared this before, one of the things I used to do with my daughters is no matter how many times I came across them during the course of the day, uh, we could be in the house all day, but every time I pass them, it's, hey, who's the most beautiful girl in the world? And their response was, I am daddy. Okay, and what can you do if you set your mind to it? I can do anything I set my mind to, the sky's the limit. My, passed by my sons. What are you? A man in training. What can you do? Anything I set my mind to. Is there any limits? There are no limits. And, 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 and it's just drilled in. It's drilled in. It's a part of it. It's elevated. So you're a mediator. You're an interceder. And you are an edifier or a lifter. And these are the things that men do in the home, and they have a uh, and, 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 and you can also call this edifier a teacher. So to simplify it, you can say mediator, interceder, teacher. Now the teacher is, I'm teaching you who you are. I'm teaching you what to expect. I'm teaching you the standards at which you operate. I'm teaching you all that I know that puts you in the best position to perform at the highest level in this world in everything that you are called to do. I teach you how to operate outside the selfishness that can be inherent in sometimes in some positions, in some situations, and to always look to the bigger picture and the bigger responsibility. I do that primarily and first and foremost by modeling it. You see me put your mom first. You see me put you and your siblings first. You see me go out and put the house first. I don't pursue selfish endeavors because selfish endeavors only serve me. I pursue the greater good of the home. I get what I benefit from by being the fullness of what I'm supposed to be in the home. It's the very opposite of what's being taught in the world. What's being taught in culture and society is get yours and then use, when you get yours, when you secure the bag, you use the bag to leverage everything you want out of anybody else. Instead of saying, I don't want to lure a woman with the bag, I wanna lure the woman with safety. I want to lure the woman with security. I want to lure the woman with respect and honor. And then the bag just comes as a part of it. But I want to lure her with the things that give her the ability to function in the fullness of who she is. Because she's remarkable. She's exceptional. She's phenomenal. But she can be diminished in in capacity when she's not in a secure environment, when she's not feeling loved, when she's not feeling protected, when she's not being provided for. So those are the things that I'm going to bring to the table. And you model it 
and then you teach it and you explain it. You explain to your son, this is what you're going to do. This is where you're going to have to be. This is a part of your responsibility. You explain and you teach to your daughter, hey, this is what you look for. Because when you bring him to me, that's what I'm going to be looking for. And he has to come through me in order to get to you because what you're going to do when you move from here to him, it is a transference of covering. It is a transferring of teacher. It's a transfer of Abba. You're, he's not just going to be your lover. He's going to, a part of him is going to father you. He's going to cover you. He's going he's to pick up everything that I left off, but he's going to bring some new, uh, new elements and components to the relationship that I can't give, that you will grow into and grow to love and need and desire. But it starts with him being able to pick up everything that I've been doing without missing anything. And you got to know what you're looking for. So you got to look and say, hey, my dad does this. My dad does this. My dad does and that is a part of it. So you're talking about mediator, you're talking about uh, uh, interceder, and you're talking about teacher. That edifies, that empowers, that brings identity, that challenges and, and, and presents the role. All of those things, that is the priesthood part of it. And the thing is, most people, even religious people, when they start thinking about praying over the home, they normally think about the female, the wife being the prayer. The wife has a whole different type of prayer, a whole different type of prayer life. The wife is praying too. The wife is interceding. The wife prays for the husband. The wife prays for the children. The wife prays in this unbelievably passionate tone. She speaks every name. She speaks in great detail. The husband is praying more for the specifics. The husband is praying for the ability to make sure that whatever he does for a living allows him to do everything he needs to do to cover everything that needs to be covered in that home. The husband cover speaks for and prays for an understanding of how to help wifey deal with some things she may be going through in the office or at work if she's working or what she may be dealing with with the kids. Uh, the husband is praying for uh, an ability to be connected to the kids in a way that they receive what he has to give to teach. His prayers probably aren't as long as the wife's, but they are direct and they're specific. And in this priestly responsibility, he is acting and interceding on the behalf of, which again is an extension of his role as protector. I really want you to understand, these are things that we teach young black males. Look, it ain't about just going out and procreating. It ain't about just how many women you can bed. It's about what you can do to enrich the life of a woman that you can be in a position to be a protector, a provider, a promoter. Oh man, that promoting thing is huge. And, and, and be a priest and all of this, but be it for your children as well, to be present and influential in the lives of your children. That cannot be under, I mean, that cannot be overstated. Now, I hope that I've you know, left you with something to think about. I hope that you can look at it. And there's so much more I can expand on that. And we're going to get into all this stuff in future uh, segments. But these are the things I'm doing. I, I want to talk about the measure. I'm talking about this is a simplified, line it up. Let's talk about it. These are the bare minimums. And what it needs to be. And the thing is, all we tend to talk about when we're talking about manhood is can he pay all the bills? And we have diminished and com diminished the role of the man. We have commodified black manhood, and it's all about the dollar. And we lose the force of who he really is in the home and in the community. And we are going to have to recover that to see the force of the black man. He is so much more than just somebody that defends the black woman and pays the bills. On that note, I'm getting ready to get out here. Don't forget, go to the description box and show some love. There are a couple of ways that you can support what we're doing. Find the way that works best for you and show some love. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.